update suffixes and group of fields footers. Here we have an example of a process where we've selected in a prefix an item. So we've selected a certain element of the family items. And besides here, we also have a suffix. So sometimes when a panel suffix value is changed, we also need this to apply in the source record. So here we have 250, obviously, because we copied the value from the source. But now let's say we change it here in the process. So we modified the suffix value, and we want this value to be updated in the source. Okay, so when selecting a prefix, its suffixes are filled in by copying the data from the source. This means that the values have been copied, and now if I change them here, they might be different in the panel of the process and in the source record. If I want, I could update the value from the panel to the source record. I can, I, we already know that we can do this with an option that appears in the form, but we could also do this with the uploader system task. So we've seen that when we upload a value in a suffix, we could select an option that allows us to also update the information in the source. So suffixes can be synchronized with their source by using an uploader system task or by using the settings in the forms editor. So here we have a system task where we selected update suffixes. And well, the function of the system task is called update suffixes and group of fields footer. And we selected the first option that says update suffixes. We'll talk about this one later. So when I mark the update suffixes option, it's going to ask me, OK, do you want to update between process panel and family record or between family records? Let's imagine we select the first option between process panel and family record. So then all I have to do is select a prefix here and indicate in what direction I want to update the information from the record to the panel or from the panel to the record. OK, so I can update in both directions. Now let's say I'm in the form. When I open the form, I could also indicate that I want to update the suffixes from the record to the panel. Or when I save the form, I could also update the values from the panel to the record. So in one direction or the other one. Now, what's the difference between updating suffixes with, an, with a system task and with this option here that we have in the forms? First of all, the option displayed in this window is going to update all the suffixes in the panel that are visible here in this form, that are being used here in this form. So let's imagine here I have a prefix of accounts with an account selected. I have a prefix of an employee with an employee selected. I have uh, maybe three or four other prefixes with all of its suffixes displayed in this form. If I have marked this option here, when I save the form, all those elements are going to be affected. So they're all going to be updated with whatever values I have selected in this form. Or vice versa, if I selected this option here, every time I open the form, all those values that I have in the source records are going to be updated to the panel of my process. But if I use a system task, it's only going to affect those suffixes of the prefix that I selected. So if I selected in the in the update system task, I selected a prefix of an employee, it's only going to update the suffixes of that prefix. So here we have an example where the flow goes to this uploader, and we're going to update suffixes in the panel. Okay, we're going to see it's quite simple. We have also seen that when uploading a suffix, the source can also be updated. But how can we update suffixes that are stored in a family record? So, okay, we already know how to update information from a source record to a panel or from a panel to a source record. That's easy. But what happens? Let's say we have a, a record, and within this record, we have a prefix, and within this record, there's also suffixes of this prefix. Okay, this requires a, a different operation. Let's see how this is done. OK, so here we have a family employee. This is a record where we have several values. And let's say one of these values has changed. 
So in this example, we can see that the record of a known family is called documentary group. Uh, it has prefixes and suffixes of this family called employees. In this element that's called norms, the editor has a certain email that's been copied from here. But if this email has changed, we might need this value to be updated. So we're going to see how we can do this uh, with, a, with a system task in a process. Because when we change the information here in the source record, it doesn't mean that we're changing the information here in this destination record where we're using the suffix. OK, so here we have a process panel where we have selected that element that's called norms. And in this case, we want to update the suffix that's inside of this element called norms. So the email suffix of Anna, that's the employee that was selected here, has changed. And we want to make sure it's updated with the last value. In order to do this, we're going to use a system task. We're going to say, instead of the option that we selected before, where we wanted to update between process panel and family record, I'm going to select this other option that's called between family records. And what I'm going to have to do after selecting this option is select the field where I have this element selected. Okay, so the field is documentary group where I have the field, sorry, where I have the option norms selected. Norms would be this record here. After that, I'm going to have to indicate here where it says element data. There's three options, panel, pre-filter, or relation. If I say panel, all I have to do is select this field. So it says select the prefix with the element, norms. So here I selected the family. Here I selected the prefix. And now I have to store the result in a numeric field. It's going to tell me if um, it modified an element or if it wasn't able to modify an element. Depending, because here if we selected panel, we're only going to modify one unique element. But if I selected pre-filter or relation, we could be modifying lots of elements. So here there's an option that says, um, OK, minus 1 would be no elements to modify. Minus 2 is there's no pre-filter. Minus 3 is there's no relation field. OK, but anyways, that can be taken care of by making sure the prefix is a mandatory field somewhere in the process. OK, so we have to remember, select the family, select the prefix with the value that we have in our panel, and select the result field. And down here, we're going to select a prefix. It's going to offer me all the prefixes that I have within this record. So I can select the prefix, for example, of employees that's called editor. And here, in what direction do I want to update? From the record to the suffix or from the suffix to the record? So when the upload is executed, the suffix in the documentary group record is going to be updated with a new value. Here we're going to see another example. It's exactly the same as the previous scenario, but this time instead of selecting a prefix that only allows us to update the suffixes of one element, we're going to select a pre-filter that allows us to update lots of elements. In this case, the pre-filter, well, first of all, we have a family that's called repairs, and there's four, four elements, okay? And we have a pre-filter, and the condition is that the cost is lower than 50 and that the class is equal to replacement, okay? My pre-filter is called unexpensive uh, substitution. So here we can see this one meets the conditions because the class is replacement and the price is under 50. This one also meets the conditions because the class is replacement and the price is under 50. This one doesn't meet the condition because the price is higher than 50. And this one doesn't meet the condition either because the class is maintenance. All right. OK, so we're going to see how to update the suffixes of all the elements that meet these conditions. We go back to the system task. Here we select between family of records. We select the family that we want to update. And here, instead of panel, we're going to select pre-filter. And when we've selected pre-filter, we're going to be able to select a pre-filter here. The system is going to offer me all the available pre-filters in the dictionary of terms, regardless of what prefix we're using. 
Then over here we have the result. Okay, this is just a numeric field. It's going to give me certain values to indicate if the upload was performed correctly or not due to what, whatever reasons. And then here I can select the prefix. Okay, so we can select any of the prefixes stored in the repairs family record. For example, this one here. And this means that all the suffixes of this prefix of all the elements that meet the conditions of this pre-filter are going to be updated. So once triggered, the suffixes of all those records that meet the conditions are going to be updated. Now here we have a scenario quite similar, but this time we can see the flow went through this uh, uploader system task and it updated all the elements that met the conditions. The ones that didn't meet the required conditions were not updated. This third example that we're going to see is quite similar again, but this time instead of selecting a prefix or a pre-filter, we want to select a relation. Okay, so here it says, we're going to see how to update data between related family records. So here we have this record called mechanic record. And it's related to these two records here, to the repair software update and to the repair battery change. And then we have another element here in this in this family that's called mechanic record with the ID24. Okay, so these are two different um, records of the same family. And this one is related to software update and it's also related to battery change. Now let's see what happens when we want to configure this system task. We select between family of records, we select the family that we want to update, we select relation, and here we have to select a prefix. In order to proceed with this action, we need to have in the panel of the process, the correct own family prefix with a value. For example, one. So this is the mechanic I have here, this is the value I have, and based on this relation, sorry, on this prefix value, a mechanic, and this family repairs, here's going to offer me all the relations that I have between repairs and mechanics. So I can select one of them. So once I've done this, I can select the result field. I can select the prefix field. Okay. Then again, here it's going to tell me all the prefix fields that I have inside of this record. Select one of them so I can update from the record to the suffix or from the suffix to the record. So all the suffixes of any family record related to the selected mechanic in the panel prefix, this one here, is going to be updated. Here we can see the result. So we know that this mechanic was selected in the panel of the process. And we know that all the repaired records, although all these records that are related to this mechanic, are going to be updated. So here we can see these two records, the software update, and the screen uh, replacement records are related to this mechanic here. So when the flow goes through the system task or it's triggered with a button, these two records are going to be updated. So their values, the price here, these suffixes are going to change within these records. The next option we can see here is that we can update prefixes and group of fields footers. In this case, let's say we want to update a footer. Why? Because there are certain scenarios where we could have a, a value in a footer within the group of fields that could be different than the footer that's outside of the group of fields. I don't know if you're very familiar with this feature, but when we're working with a group of fields, we can create footers for our columns, and we can actually have our footer displayed in two different places. One, within the group of fields. And the second way we can display this footer is as an independent field in, our, in, in the panel of our process and obviously also in a form. So there are certain scenarios where maybe we're adding lines to a group of fields. So these values should actually be updated. But if we're not displaying it in a form, the value is not really going to be updated. So if the group of fields footer was, was loaded, it was 
added to the panel as a general field. It can be automatically updated just by adding it to the form, or it could be automatically updated when we trigger an update with a, with a system task. So here there's a very important note. It says if the group of fields footer was added to the process panel as a general field and it's not visible in forms or it's not updated with a system task, in certain scenarios it could be empty or maybe it could have a different value than the real value that it should have. Why? Because let's say, well, I'm going to go to the next slide. So here we have an example. Let's say we have a process where I've added several fields, for example, sorry, several lines to a group of fields. Now we've got a total price in the footer. It's a sum of all that column where we have the different prices. The total amount is 2,300. But later on, let's say there's several system tasks that are applying maybe taxes or discounts or whatever to this group of fields. So they're changing the values of the price. But the group of fields footer, it's not being updated. We can update this whenever we want. It's optional. And you might think, okay, why would someone update a footer of a group of fields in some scenarios and in others they might not want to update it? This is because it depends on each scenario. Some, some processes require us to be able to compare the, the value or the amount that we have in a footer in a certain moment in time with another value it had previously. So this is going to allow you to do these type of operations. Let's see this example. Here we wanted to create a document. And in the document we want, in the content of the document, we want to display the final price. And here we can see, obviously, if we have these values, the final price is going to be 2,300. But let's say here, there's maybe different taxes and discounts that are being applied to this group of fields. So the real value in the footer is not 2,300. So it depends on what do we do, do we actually want to do. Do we want to create a document with the initial value, with the initial uh, value of the footer of the offer that we uh, gave the customer when the process started? Or do we actually want to add in the document the value? of the offer that let's say we have after all of these uploads have been triggered. Okay, so depending on the scenario, depending on what we want to do, we could add an up, uh, a system task to update these footers. And when we add the system task to the diagram and we configure it to update the footer of the group of fields, when the flow goes through it, it's going to update this value with whatever discounts were applied or whatever taxes were applied. Okay. So let's say here there was different uh, values or different things that modified the values that we had in this column in these columns. Well, that means that the final price that appears in the document is going to be the price that has to be applied in this exact moment because we've added the system task to update the footer in this exact moment. The system test headings are going to be very simple. We're going to see it later on. The first thing we're going to see is how to update suffixes and group of fields footers. And in this button, the first thing we want to see is the configuration. What, what is this button doing? One second. So here we can see the configuration. Now we can see that it's got a system task. And basically what it's going to do is going to update between the process panel and the family record. And it's going to grab whatever we have in the panel and update it in the record of this prefix, documentary group. Okay, so we already mentioned that if we mark an option like this one here that says actions on saving the form. Well, if we say we want to update suffixes from the panel to the record, we're going to be updating all the suffixes of each single prefix that we have in this form. So we might not want to update everything. We might only want to update a specific prefix, like in this scenario. So I can add a system task with a button, or I could add it to the diagram. And in the configuration, I could say, look, I want to update the suffixes, but only of this prefix, okay? So in this scenario, we can see that the option selected is uploader, update suffixes and group of fields footer, 
the operation that we selected was the first one that appears here, update suffixes. And once we selected it, this window pops up where all we have to do is select one of these two options. In this case, we've selected between process panel and family record. Later on, I'll show you guys this one. Here we selected the prefix that we wanted to update. And here we've indicated that we want to update from the panel to the record. Okay, now let's see what would be the result of clicking on this button. So here, here I have the, the form. Okay, here we're not in configuration anymore. And here I have a record, it's called documentary group. And here I have a class, this is a suffix. And here it says external. And let's check the record inside. Obviously it's external too. So we have a copy of this field in this suffix here. Okay, the copied value is external. Now, let's say in the process, we wanna click on a button and we want to indicate that whatever we've changed here in our process needs to be instantly changed in the source record, in this documentary group record. So let's say I change it to general, all right? And now I'm gonna click on this button. I click on it. So if I go back into the record, documentary group, look, it's changed to general, okay? Let's do it again. I'm gonna change it to internal. I hit the button. And within this record, it's changed to internal, okay? If I change it to external and I hit the button, here we can see again, it's been changed to external. So we can see by modifying the values in the process and triggering this action, we can trigger it manually as we just did, or we can trigger it automatically because we also know that we can trigger buttons automatically. Uh, we could be updating the information that's inside of this documentary group. All the suffixes that are being used in the panel of the process could, could be changed not only in the panel of the process, but also be synchronized with the source of those suffixes and change them in the source like we did here. Now in the next uh, button, this one here, we're actually going to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to update information between family records. Let's say for example, within this record, I have a prefix and this prefix has a suffix. Now we already know how to change uh, the suffixes from the panel to the record and from the record to the panel. This is quite simple. We've already seen how to do this in several different ways. But what happens when we have a record and inside of that record, we have a suffix and we want to update it. For example, this suffix of the email of this employee, of this editor. So obviously this has nothing to do with the panel of the process because we're going to be changing an email based on the record of an employee within a record of a documentary group, okay? So this has nothing to do with the panel. So the first thing we we're going to see is the configuration of this button. So we click here and we can see in the system task, we've selected, in this case, between family records. So this has nothing to do with the, with the panel of the process. And basically all we, we have to do is select, okay, what family do we want to update? based on what, on a panel field, on a pre-filter, a relation, and here we've selected the prefix where we have the documentary group. So we're saying we only want to update one unique element, although we could update a lot of different elements. So we could do massive updates if we select a pre-filter or, or a relation. And then down here, it says, okay, on what prefix do you want to update? And here it's gonna offer me all the prefixes that are inside of the record documentary group. So I've selected editor, and I've indicated that I want to update from the record to the suffix. This is from the record of the employee that's been selected in the editor field, in the editor prefix field, to the suffix that is displayed inside of the documentary group record, okay? So here we've seen the configuration. We've already explained it before too. Now, all we have to do is click on the button. Obviously here, if I click on the button, it's not really gonna do anything because I haven't changed the email. So when I enter, we can see here the email is autoportal.demo at gmail.com. Okay, and now I'm going to open the record of this employee. And I'm gonna change the email. I'm gonna put here uh, 1111, all save. From this moment on, this suffix is different. So we've updated the, we've changed the value here in this record. 
So when I go to documentary group here, we can see in the record, obviously, in the suffix, it still has the old value. Okay. But if we want to update it, we just click on this button in the process. So we trigger this system task. And when we go inside of the record of the documentary group, now we can see it's got an updated value. Okay. The suffix has been updated. Let's do that again. I'll change this. I'll leave it as it was. I'll save and exit. I'll go back to updating. And once I go inside of this record, I can see it's been updated. All right. So we've got all these different combinations to move the information from one place to another, even when we're not within the context of the process. Now there's one last option I want to show you. This is very, very simple to, to configure. It's called update group of fields footer. Okay. Basically what we want to do, as I mentioned earlier, here we have a group of fields with several lines. It actually has six lines and we have the same footer outside of the group of fields. And let's say we're talking about a scenario where we've done several operations with this group of fields with system, system tasks in the diagram, and we haven't been able to update this here. So we could use this action to update this footer here. And as I mentioned, in some scenarios, we might want to update it, and in other scenarios, we might not want to. So in this case, let's say we want to compare the current value or the old value of the footer of the group of fields with the new value, that would be six, okay? So in this case, we wouldn't want to update it. But if I click on this button, for some reason it's not updated. We can see it's been updated. So now let's see the configuration. Here I have my action button settings. And when I enter, I have this button here. It says update group of fields footer. All I have to do is select the footer. Okay. The only footers that are going to appear here are the footers that are being uh, used as independent fields not within the group of fields. Okay. So if I enter the configuration of a group of fields, I have this footer over here. It's called uh, lines number. Okay. This is a group of fields footer, but it's not referring to this one here. If we want to use this separate option as an independent field, we're going to have to go here. We're going to have to go to all. We can filter, for example, by footers. And we're going to have to add this one this footer to the to the panel of our process and then to the division where we want to use it. As soon as we create a footer in a group of fields, this independent field is going to be automatically created. So it's not as if we have to create a new field. It's going to be automatically created as soon as we create a new footer in the group of fields.